Peace. What's good? How y'all doing? This is Zaza Ali. Today is Wednesday, July 5th, 2023. I pray that this message reaches you all in the best of health, spirit, and mind. I am doing very well. Thank you very much for inquiring. I, as always, when I put out content, especially on YouTube, because I don't really put out a lot of videos on YouTube now, I always think about all the things that I didn't say um, on my notes and as well as a couple of other things that have happened since I put up that spiritual Kung Fu video, including some of the um, responses that I've gotten from that video. It's been overwhelmingly, <clears throat> excuse me, positive. And I think the frequency um, of that particular conversation is going to pass and is going to serve a lot of people, people who are in tune and who are striving to be um, in alignment with truth. I think that that, that video uh, hopefully speaks to that. At least that's the, the perspective I've gotten from the responses. So I'm gonna be doing a live video probably in a couple of days, announcing some dates that I'm gonna be doing, speaking, speaking engagements, um, as well as my book tour. Uh, today is Wednesday, maybe this weekend or something like that. I'm gonna do a live and uh, it'll be good to see well, you won't see my face, but I'll see, I'll see, I won't see your face, but you'll see my face. Um, and yeah, just to check in with you guys and um, get the freak, feel the frequency and the vibration for where you guys are. I wanted to specifically talk today. Oh, wait, real quick before I get into that. Just a reminder, I, as of July, 2023, I will no longer be after July 2023, I will no longer be offering one-on-one -on -one consultations. It has been an absolute pleasure for the last maybe six or seven years um, to have worked with people from all around the world. Um, right now you can sign up for a one-hour consultation and talk to me and I can help you and assist you and be of service in any way, you know, with anything that you may be struggling with or something that you just might wanna get a second perspective on. And I have had wonderful, wonderful success. Uh, I'm still gonna be working with people, but just not in a, you know, hit me up and do a one-on-one -on -one consultation type setting. It'll be much more um, inclusive and long-term type relation working relationships. But yeah, so July, the end of this month is going to be the end of doing that. I'm going to put links in the description for $25 of all for one-on-one -on -one consultation and also a five-for-five -five consultation special that I'm offering right now. And after July 2023, uh, I won't be doing that anymore. And, and it's been wonderful and it's been great. And I have been very um, satisfied in doing so. I just know that <clears throat> I have known for some time now that you know, the ramifications of people not addressing this spiritual warfare on an individual level, obviously, and then which naturally means the collective as well. And I'm not talking about, you know, being in spiritual warfare mode, right, whatever that is, but I'm talking about people's inability to look within themselves and to challenge themselves and challenge their fears and go to the heart of the matter, whatever the heart of the matter is, because there's always a heart of the matter. That's why we came here. <laughs> um, things to discover about ourselves, things to explore, things to overcome, things to accomplish. And we now find ourselves in this society surrounded by people <clears throat> who make a living and have a way of life of running from truth, which we're gonna talk about in particular when we talk about the hive mind. So I wanted to have this conversation to add on to the spiritual Kung Fu video, but also to raise the vibration or to contribute to raising the vibration because the, the, the social media airwaves and the, you know, the, the, the vibrational airwaves that we are all collectively sharing <clears throat> are very dense right now and staticky and chaotic and you know is there's there's not a lot of clarity and and confusion in the airwaves just in terms of those spaces 
uh, and as this situation that all of us as human beings are currently facing. I don't know how many of you guys <laughs> that are listening to me actually know how much of what's going on in the backdrop of the world. <clears throat> extremely important things that we have to stop and talk about things like concubine culture. We have to divert our attention from major elephants in the room to stop and talk about silly things. And it's silly in one regard for sure, but then it's important in another. That's why I'm talking about it. That's why I've been talking about it for a long time. I get so irritated when I hear people say, oh, nobody's talking about this. Yeah, when the females like me talk about it, y'all don't support us. And you complain that there's none of us <laughs> when we've been here the whole time, but water six is on level. <laughs> and so a lot of times the guys who are exposing or focusing on the quote unquote concubines or <clears throat> concubines, or the hood rats or the ratchets or the you know black american women who ain't this and who ain't that they usually have so much experience with those women because water seeks its own level i also wanted to add um i don't do a lot of content on youtube you know but when i do do content do put up videos i really kind of put my foot into it so to speak like last video was an hour and 45 minutes I'm not going to, I'm going to try not to talk too long today, but I am going to talk long enough to make my point. But I've noticed that like, I don't, I'm not really getting any, you know, any donation type love. <laughs> and I'm not doing this for financial reasons, obviously. Um, YouTube videos, unless you're talking about celebrity culture, you know, or have a major following, this is not really a, a major um, monetary assistance so to speak, if you make it your, your, your focus, it can be, but that's not really my focus. Um, but you know, the, the, the idea of reciprocity and reciprocal relationships is critical in this hour. And so as I sit down to talk to you guys, to share my life experience and to share my research and sort of help the collective conscious put these things into context and to speak up for the women who are not being spoken for, and to speak up for the men who are not being spoken for and to intentionally tries to try to raise the vibration and to put out a message that 13, 14, 15, 16 year old girls can listen to and can find some inspiration in. I think it would be nice, especially my audience, if there's some reciprocity. So I put my cash app in the comment section. I'll put it in there again. Again, I don't do this for money, but I definitely for sure believe in reciprocity. And, you know, if I sit down and talk to you guys for an hour, I, before I sat down and started talking to you guys, I sat for an hour and took notes and put these slides together. And, you know, and even before I did this for the last couple of days, since I did the spiritual Kung Fu video, this, these, these, this continuum of the conversation has been happening in the back of my mind. So I'm just saying reciprocity is a beautiful thing. So I wanna talk specifically about the hive mind. And I've said in previous videos, I think I said it in Spiritual Kung Fu, that the hive mind is no longer captivated by God and by nature and by the living experience. And I wanna double down on that and then also say, or talk about the idea of the hive mind no longer being captivated by love. Because the hive mind is no longer captivated by love. And that's a large part of what we're gonna talk about today when, when, we, when we're talking about the male-female dichotomy. What is being represented of black women in terms of the social media, mainstream media, entertainment, celebrities, et cetera, and juxtaposing that with the average organic, real, every day-to-day -day life of the average Black woman. Two very different things. But I say that understanding that now, whereas Black women were sort of seen as, you know, a pinnacle, an ideal, 
even the matriarchal sort of, you know, all cultures know consciously or subconsciously that the black woman is the epitome of the matriarchal context. Now, fast forward to 2023 in the days of the city girls and uh, WAP culture, making concubines, queens, you know, our bets are off, but I'm just saying, This is the time where, and, and, and let me emphasize this, let me backtrack for a second, or not backtrack, let me emphasize this point. There's, we're not living in normal times. <laughs> There's nothing normal about anything happening in mainstream media, in pop culture, in pop concerts, in hip hop concerts. It, you know, the fact that we had major hip hop celebrities traveling, uh, excuse me, artists, rappers, singers, et cetera, traveling across the country and doing shows in major stadiums that required you to take a needle in your arm in order to witness an entertainment presentation is madness. And if you did that, you might want to stop and reflect and take a look in the mirror. Even getting tested. Tests are part of the Fugazi, but I digress. This video is not about that. <laughs> Even though we're going to talk about that in just a second, but I want to, you know, the the undercurrent behind my momentum is these silly women. We live in an era of silly women. And concubine is not necessarily, definition wise, the proper contextual word for the point that I'm trying to make, but I'm flipping the word because obviously what concubine meant in ancient times wouldn't really be appropriate for now. It's had, it's and, and it's evolved over time because at one time it was referring to females that the kings of ancient times would take on into their harem and be, you know, not necessarily a wife, but to be a part of the harem where the king would have access at his, at his pleasure, right? Then there's a definition of concubine that refers to a mistress or an extramarital affair, a woman having an affair with a man outside of his relationship. When I use the term, I'm referring to females that are operating in their lower nature, leading with sexual energy. I'm going to say that again, and I'm going to say it slow so I can slow all you feminists and all you females that don't like to self-reflect and look in the mirror and pay attention to what's happening around you, including how you carry yourself and not being able to differentiate between attention and respect, because those are two very different things. My modern update for the, the, the word concubine is a female leading, moving from her lower self. Wait, did I say, am I saying it right? A female operating in her lower nature, leading with sex. And yeah, hey, there's the male equivalent of that too, for sure. <laughs> I have to think of a word for that. I, a vision just came in my head, but I'm not gonna say it because <laughs> y'all be ready to fight. <laughs> But let's stay focused. <laughs> so here we are in moving towards the age of Aquarius, this timeline where we're not in it yet, but everything that is happening in this timeline right now is absolutely setting up the infrastructure and the building blocks for the age of Aquarius. And since we know that consciousness creates reality, and since we know that the way that, that the collective consciousness is thinking and acting and feeling right now in 2023 is what is going to be represented in the physical dichotomy of 2050 and 2100, et cetera, et cetera. And, and Lord only knows what the world is gonna look at, like at that time. But right now they are setting up new avatars 
for what the women of their world is are going to look like and be like. Their world, of course, we are denoting that these people are not of God, do not represent love or consciousness or righteousness. Yes, some of your faves are serving their agenda. Most of your faves actually. And this is why during a three year timeline of extreme medical and scientific and psychological and emotional abuse that has been inflicted on the whole entire world behind a lie, right in the middle of that taking place, a song called WAP, W-A-P, featuring Cardi B and Megan Thee Stallion, featuring a video that is soft porn. And that's, you know, soft porn would definitely be appropriate. Was featured on the airwaves and silly women were riding around in their cars with their daughters and their sons in the background listening to it. And silly women would post videos of their daughters online dancing and shaking and halfway twerking, but not too much, you know, cause she's still young with that music playing in the background. So we talked before one of the videos or so I've been talking about this so long. It's kind of like, you know, sometimes when I hear myself talking, I get bored because we are supposed to be on some, some quantum shit right now, just to be honest. I mean, I, I, that's the direction I'm headed for sure. But I'm just saying humanity, in terms of the scope and the scale of what's happening in the world and the universal impact of what's happening on this planet, in terms of the level of evil and wickedness in this agenda that's taking place all around us and everybody is tap dancing and shucking and jiving and pretending like it's not happening, it is absolutely fascinating. There should be no obesity in America. <laughs> the amount of time y'all spend running from truth. So the underlying thing for today's conversation is a balance of indulgence and discipline. We're gonna stop the women who don't wanna be held accountable and who are, you know, got their fists up with their feminist flags and we're gonna stop the guys who don't wanna be held accountable and who don't think women should be telling men what to do, et cetera, et cetera. We're gonna slow you, all of you guys down very early on. This conversation is about the, about the balance of indulgence and discipline. If the word discipline is a curse word for you or something you're uncomfortable considering, then you can just stop watching and save us all some time now. So, I don't wanna hold y'all for long, but I do have some things to get off my chest. I've said this many times before, I will continue to say this, whole protocols do not work on queens. Yes, you can quote me, because this is my 100% exact quote. Been saying it for years now. Whole protocols do not work on queens. Message to the men of the world. Because I've been talking about having discernment and spiritual shrewdness. And this is going to be a very important message to you, my brothers, potential kings, potential gods of the earth. Potential meaning that it's something to aspire to and to strive to. <laughs> I think we, you know, we said the black man is God and a lot of y'all went to sleep because <laughs> you was God. That's not what the purpose of that was for. So now we have to, to rearrange the coding of the language so that we can remember that we came here to aspire to become who we've always been. It's a remembrance process, it takes work, it takes internal awareness, it takes self-reflection, takes being in this world and not of it, especially in this hour. So I, I you know, this, this whole protocols don't work on Queens. This is, this is particularly special to me because I have had so much experience with men in my time of doing this work through these social media streets 
who I have either done consultations with or they became clients or we just developed friendships, relationships. Maybe they came to one of my events, you know, et cetera, et cetera. The, the process of getting to know people, right? But there is always, not always, but many times this weird moment where this particular understanding between me and these gentlemen has to be underscored. No, you don't, that's, you don't. <laughs> that's not how you conduct yourself with a woman that's not interested in you in any, in any means beyond trying to help you or to see you do well. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? That's not the type of vibration and language and energy and intention that you bring to a woman that is responsible for a lot more than just herself. And that's intentionally carrying herself with a certain type of mindset, a certain type of frequency and vibration and energy because she knows the impact that that has on the people that she comes in contact with. So it's an intentional thing, intentionally carrying herself in a certain type of way, online and otherwise. And now you wanna come and intercept that with the whole protocols. And then we always have a heart to heart, you know what I'm saying? A moment where I had to, you know, <laughs> do that Zaza Ali thing, whatever that is. And then we have an understanding and then we move forward. And I've made great, built great relationships. <laughs> but there's always a moment. And what I'm saying is we need to get to a point where we don't have to have those moments. So in the same way that women need to be able to differentiate, pick up on vibes, listen to how you speak, listen to how you talk about your mother, listen to how you carry yourself. Do you have children? How do you talk about them? What's the relationship like? What's the relationship with the children's mother? Et cetera, et cetera. Men need to start having, you know, discerning, sharpening their swords, so to speak. Still sharpen steel. Okay, well then sharpen your steel. discernment awareness i don't know you guys have a masculine class for that you know, a lot of y'all don't like to listen to women <laughs> a man who refuses to learn from a woman is a fool but a woman with nothing to teach him even more so why would you select a woman with nothing to teach you my brothers a woman is supposed to add value add unto everything every space Every relationship. Y'all, y'all choosing succubuses that are draining the life force out of you. I went back to Atlanta for my recent uh event, the most recent event that I did, and um, you know, reconnected with some old faces and was, you know, in the community and and, and rubbing elbows and rubbing shoulders. And I can see a there is a, a density in a lot of the men in Atlanta supposedly a cultural mecca it is a cultural mecca not supposedly it absolutely is a cultural mecca but there's also a very not often spoken about but a very real real excuse me sex magic type it's a cultish vibe in my opinion but you know i was on the outside looking in so <laughs> but i mean i'm bringing it up because i can see that that energy is sucking the life force energy out a lot of a lot of the men the normally vibrant men in that community i'm going to talk about it when i come back but i'm just saying so water seeks its own level we have a whole culture a whole generation a whole warriorhood of men that have a thousand and a million and a billion negative projections negative expectations, negative expressions, negative opinions, negative thoughts, negative tweets, negative DMs, negative videos, negative podcasts about how horrible, awful, and, and, and dissatisfying the Black woman of America in particular is. And if quant, uh, consciousness creates reality, and it does, what do you think that's creating? Who do you think that's helping? 
What type of life are you breathing into existence with your negative expectations and projections? And again, if water seeks its own level, then why do you keep running into the same mirror of yourself? Oh, that's the real question. <laughs> One of these days we'll be ready to talk about it. I'm gonna come back to this quote <clears throat> in just a second, but I wanna, I'm saying get started, but I'm 25 minutes in. I have my clock right in front of me because I'm not gonna talk you guys to death, but um, I'm pacing myself. So I wanted to, you know, we'll just trim the fat a little bit on this conversation. Cause you know, we'd like to, there's a lot of argument about polygamy and you know, men aren't supposed to be monogamous. Now women are talking about, they don't wanna be monogamous. Nobody wants to be married. Nobody wants to settle down. You know, this whole casual sex culture, I'm, 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 a, I'm a woman, I'm free, I'm liberated. I can do whatever I wanna do you know, blurring the concept of gender, blurring, blurring all of the lines, et cetera, et cetera. Well, let's just trim the fat on all these conversations real quick. According to, this is the, uh, oh, I forget the name of this website. It's the, um, they have a website that keeps track of all of the world data. Right, so you know, population statistics, vaccine statistics, you know, sexually transmitted diseases, poverty, et cetera, et cetera. It's that type of site, right? According to this website, seventy point three percent of the world population has received at least one dose of a COVID nineteen vaccine. Thirteen point four seven billion doses have been administered globally, and forty. 1,920 are now administered each day. 32.2% of people in low income countries have received at least one dose. Now, just a caveat that 32.2% of people in low income countries, that's a, that's a fugazi and a mind game because whether that statistic is right or not, the emphasis is these are places that we need to go in and make sure that they're actually getting the shot. And the numbers could be accurate, the numbers could be higher, the numbers could be lower, but I'm just saying. <laughs> so it's like, you know, we're emphasizing that we need to go out and help the poor, of course, darker skinned people of the world. But the point that I'm making is that there's two categories of people really three categories of people that would fit into this particular point that I'm making. The one is for sure the 70.3% of the world population who have received at least one dose of the shot. And mind you guys, I'm not, you know, everything to me, I question, they say these numbers, these statistics, I don't know how much of this is accurate, but I know most of the people that I know actually got it. So <laughs> considering that, 70%, would I say 70% of the people that I know took it? And I know a lot of people, probably more than that, okay? So I think these numbers might be as close to accurate, at least for the sake of the conversation that we're having now. So we have the first category, which is the 70.3% of the world population who's received at least one dose. And then we have the second population, which is a partial part of that number, the people who regret taking it and who have set off on a healing journey of, of spiritual awareness and ascension and physical purging and detoxing and figuring out what's inside of them so that they can get rid of it and so that they can you know, figure out why they were operating in fear-based consciousness and overcome this particular adversity and do whatever it takes, et cetera, et cetera. That number is a very small percentage of that 70.3% of people, I can assure you. A very small number, but they still deserve their own category, okay? Because we always want to make sure that we leave the door open for redemption and for healing and for, you know, the mind is limitless and you can do and create anything because you can. It just takes gumption, it takes courage, and it takes focus and intention. So those are two of the categories. And then the third category is people like me. <laughs> who never have and who never will. Okay. So there's 
Seven, 70% of the world population in the first category. There's maybe 1% of the, the population, and I'm being super nice with that number, 1% of the population in that second category. And then there is, just for the sake of numbers, we're going to sub subtract 100% from 70.3% to get 29.7%. So 29.7% 29 would be the people like me that haven't gotten it and that aren't getting it, regardless to whom or what, okay? We can, you know, add numbers for, there's obviously gray areas to this, but I think everybody gets where I'm going. If you are in the 29.3 percentile of the world's population, then that means that your preferred mate is going to be in that same population of peoples in the world. I'm not going to get into the nitty gritty of this because I've been supremely and very effectively censored for a long time now, and I'm tired of jumping through hoops with these people. I've put out so much data and content on my website, on this page before they got taken down. It's just, you know, there's no reason for people to be uninformed. But yes, this is a situation where having very staunch standards, asking very important questions about people's health decision before sexual activity is engaged. Because if you're in that 29.3 percentile, you definitely want to be connecting with and building with somebody that's in that 29.3 percentile or somebody that's in that one percentile in that second category. And I'm gonna leave it at that. So all the conversation about, you know, <laughs> sharing, about polygamy, about, you know, I, all, all of it, God is cleaning it all up right now. God is, you know, taking the edge and the sting and the difficulty off of these conversations that we continue to keep having that aren't going anywhere, that aren't building anything, that aren't leading to anything. Women are going to have to settle because there's only this amount of men in the world. Well, I am of the, you know, hashtag stay single. Not forever, but until your water seeks its own level. That goes for men too, by the way, specifically for men, because this is a very heavy message specifically for all of us, but specifically for men. We're going to need you guys to step your discipline game up sexually, because look at the numbers. This isn't even like, <laughs> yeah, I want to argue about gender roles and Bible passages and what the Quran says, like, bro, let's do the math. Islam is mathematics. Mathematics is Islam. It can be proven in a limited time. Okay, then let's look at the numbers. So you're going to have to choose your four wives. <laughs> I'm just saying, and it ain't just about having or not having the shot because you're, you know, these decisions can tell me a lot about where your mind is. Save us all some time in terms of where your, where's your level of spiritual awareness. I'm just saying. I talked in spiritual Kung Fu about this particular, the spiritual bodies, <clears throat> excuse me, the angel self, the higher eye, the sentient, the sentient body and soul members, the eye organization, the body elemental being, the, es the esteric body and the doppelganger or the shadow. And these are all representing the different spiritual faculties, uh, frequencies and, um, Layers would definitely be an appropriate uh, word, but spiritual bodies as well, auras, if you will, right? The bodies of the human being, the material body, the physical body, also called the phantom body or form body, the etheric body, also called the life body or the body of formative forces, the astral body, and then the sentient body. Um, and stay with me, guys. Now we're back to being able to decipher between a queen and a concubine, right? If I'm a queen, I can hold your attention for 35 minutes <laughs> and hopefully we're gonna learn something. But I'm just saying, going back to that conversation about 
your antennas as men being up and learning how to decipher when a woman is trying to add unto you to the fullness of you and the best part of you opposed to just taking from you, i.e., where's my Birkin bag or, you know what I'm saying? You're going to pay for this, you know what, or top me off or whatever this, you know, I'm just so sorry. <laughs> I'm just talking y'all. So the soul of the human being, which would be the I and the I organization, the sentient soul, the intellectual soul, also called mind soul or rational soul, the consciousness soul, the spirit of the human being, the spirit self, the life spirit, the spirit human, the spiritual team, the angel, the body elemental being, the doppelganger or the depth the double or the shadow. Now these are, this gentleman, Thomas, May, Thomas Mayers, this is his actually his actual image, but I'm using it because his information is in alignment with my perspective. And it also simplifies the process for me because he explained this so powerfully and so perfectly in the presentation that he did. And there was another image that was Wait, did I? Let me see if I put it in here. Okay, yes, I did. Okay, so this image representing the healthy representation of what those spiritual bodies are supposed to look like, the depth of what it means to be a spiritual being having a human experience, right? When we look at the next image, this was his representation of the separation of the spiritual bodies from many, dare I say, NPCs that are among us or people that may have made decisions that have forced them to be separate from the creator or source energy or God. You can go back to spiritual Kung Fu because I don't want to get too deep into that. But the point that I want to make is this, because this post is what inspired me to do this video in the first place. I was going to call the video having sex with 36 men just because I thought that was you know, rambunctious and, and, and what the hell is she talking about? You know, People nowadays need, they need pizzazz <laughs> to be interested in learning. You know what I'm saying? So it was pizzazz and it was also like, wait a minute, what? But <clears throat> I also don't want YouTube to, you know, the algorithm to start sending me in different directions because they think that I'm, you know, whatever. Actually, if I use that title, it'll probably get more attention because um, it sounds baseless and ignorant, which is what this woman said, which is why I'm sharing this. I don't know who this person is. I don't follow him. This is just a post that was posted on another page and I saw it and then I read the comments and it just absolutely blew my mind. Again, going back to the world of silly women. She says, assuming this is a real person and it's a real woman, there is no difference between having sex with 36 men and having sex 36 times with one man. This is what I need for men to avoid at all costs. And you actually have to sit down and have a conversation with a woman like this in order to peer into her mind, right? This is why you guys have to start treating yourselves more sacredly and not betting women that you haven't taken a chance to get to know, let alone like. How do y'all females are out here having sex with men that don't even like you? They're just physically attracted to you. So let's use her math. There's no difference between having sex with 36 men and having sex 36 times with one man. I also want to just add into the fray, just for the sake of icons, a icon, <laughs> acons, iconic statement. I'm just, iconic. I'm saying that tongue in cheek, almost laughing. Um, his statement about a man being able to have sex with 60 women and have men being superior to women because a man can have sex with 60 different women and get all 60 women pregnant, but a woman can only get pregnant by one man, 60 by one man, right? Math was something like that. So let's just keep those that in the, the back. I'm 90% sure that was Akon, but I, you know, in the world of, of professional podcasters, there are so many of them now. They're so intelligent and wise. They have so many things to say. No answers for the world's real problems, though. It's interesting. Um, so using Akon's math and this lady's math, 
<clears throat> let's let's go back to our images and our gra graphs that represent the human aura and the spiritual bodies, which we all have, whether we know it or not. Now, there are some new age conversations about cloning and NPCs that 100% <laughs> warrant our attention. The ones who are paying attention, not everybody though, but I'm just saying. So when we start talking about that element, transhuman elements, this might not necessarily be the same. <laughs> you know, spiritual makeup, so to speak. But let's just assume that all human beings, you know, from the, the classiest to the ratchetest among us, male and female, are operating with these spiritual bodies. And based on where you are in your consciousness, where you are in your vibration, how you eat, how you think, how you live, right? How much trauma you're holding in your physical body versus how much free-flowing oxygen and energy your microcosmic orbit is high, operating at a high function or it's not operating at all. Maybe your pineal gland is, is, is flamed up. Chi is high. Spirit is high. You know what I mean? Aura is strong. Signal is strong. Resonance, vibration is powerful. I mean, that's where I'm headed. <laughs> That's what I'm striving for, but I'm just saying. So it could be that, or it could be gray and dull and dingy and heavy and weighted, not powerful, not connected to the sentient body and the soul members, not strongly connected to the angel. And that's where there's so much bad luck and so much chaos and so much dysfunction. Because how could you have an angel riding with you when you constantly be dwelling in darkness? You have a responsibility to maintain that relationship, but that's another video for another time. The doppelganger or the shadow is leading a lot of people, living in your darkness, living through your darkness. So the concubine energy is leading from the lower nature, using sexual energy, leading with sexual energy. That's the Jezebel spirit. That's the Delilah spirit. That's the Cardi B spirit. That's the Megan Thee Stallion spirit. That's the Mulatto spirit. That's the Beyonce spirit when she's not talking about her children. And not all of it. I don't, you know what I mean? Because obviously she's a mother now. She's married. So she's representing a whole different element in terms of womanhood, but she's still twerking in front of cameras. I mean, it just has to be said. The bootylicious element is alive. It's not a judgment, it's just a fact. So there was a video that I was gonna show, uh, and I'm glad I didn't save it, because I don't really like bring ch people's children into my point, unless it's just so obviously public that it's a part of you know the, the point that I wanna make, but there is a video that I saw of her and I didn't, I forgot to save it on YouTube because I was like, that's, that's the energy right there. That's the point that I'm trying to make. But she's walking with her daughter and there's paparazzi around. It looks like they might be at some type of show or something because there's a lot of energy happening around them. And you know, that paparazzi, paparazzi energy is super vulturous. It's like super negative, super demonic, super like just, you know, whatever. But She's walking, holding her daughter's hand, and she has on a full bullet, a full blown body suit, like a cat suit. But then the cat suit has is split open on the sides, so it's fully open on the sides, and it has like zigzag zigzag tie ups on the side. So basically, the whole entire side of her body, from her calves all the way up to under her arms, is open. You know, so it's very super super sexual sexually revealing outfit. I mean, it would be super appropriate on any strip club, at any strip club, right? So she's walking with her daughter, but she also got the, the, the energy, the stripper energy on her. Plus the cameras are, are, are flashing, right? And so she got that whole little kitten per, you know, sex kitten, MK Ultra, sex slave shit, probably not for her though, because it's that energy that again, leading from the lower nature, Leading from the lower nature, using sexual energy, weaponizing sexuality. And we know she's leading from the lower nature because why would you be walking and expressing any sort of sexual energy while you're holding your child? 
while she's in the presence of all of these adults, your primary primary focus should be making sure that she's safe, but you're actually putting her in harm's way because you are expressing and resonating a very, very, very strong sexual energy. So the, her daughter has these spiritual bodies, not as well fully function, I would say, as a child. And then she has these dingy or dull or vibrant and, and bright. I don't know. That's not for us to determine. But the point is, coming now to two interesting videos. The video on the right is Black women at the Cape Coast slave castles dungeons twerking. Again, silly women. This is what happens when you make strippers your avatar. Silly women, concubine culture. No respect, nothing is sacred, nothing, everything's a joke and everything's a game until it's not. So the image on the left is the video I've replayed of the, the auric fields and the spiritual body, so to speak, and, and it's like a visual representation of these spiritual bodies and how they express and the love frequency and being in nature and meditating and being present and being still elevates this auric field, which we can automatically process and assume that all of those spiritual bodies are naturally going to increase in vibration, increase in resonance and increase in power as a result, right? That's good mathematics, right? So what if, again, in the example of Cardi B walking through, looking like a sex kitten and radiating super strong sexual energy, how does that resonance, how does that resonance process in terms of what her daughter is picking up in her electromagnetic field and what that's making her feel in her electromagnetic field they're by physical body. Black women being the mothers of civilization, the queens of the earth, et cetera, et cetera. So what's happening when you go out in the world and you experience the world, other cultures, races, other men, other women, other experiences out in the world, and you're leading from your lower nature, this low vibrational sexual energy. Why do you think Megan Thee Stallion is a household name? What does that frequency look like on stage when you got 15 or 20 women twerking and pumping the ground like reptilian minded entities, elements or controlled reptilian mind controlled elements, entities, et cetera, et cetera. NPCs, I'm okay with that too. It's not a judgment, but we're in a very critical hour. I have to speak. I can't mince words anymore. I've been trying to. <laughs> this is not a situation to handle people with kid gloves. With all due respect, but with love, of course. I'm just trying to figure out how to keep my son away from all of this. This is at the Estens Festival, and this has been trending for the last couple of days because all the females got up on, Megan Thee Stallion had a twerking boot camp, and all of the females, including a bunch of female celebrities got up on stage in front of a bunch of women, mind you. Why do women wanna see this shit? I get if men are having, or even you know women who like women, okay. If you're a woman and who's attracted to females, this might be attractive to you. But I would imagine that most of the females at the Essence Festival are not, into women like that. So why 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 was this? This is not like <laughs> if we want to go to the strip club, we'll go to the strip club. Why did you bring the strip club to us? This is the bird brain, reptilian brain element of the human being who is not fully functional and fully cycling, who has had to turn off very important aspects of herself, most importantly her connection to God and something greater than herself manifesting itself in the physical in the name of black magic and black excellence. Now let's just cut the shit. I'm curious how many of these women have taken the you know what. It's relative nowadays. 
because behaviors are being modified every day. <laughs> it's not an excuse, it's just something to add into the equation. How do I keep my son away from you and your daughters? Please tell me, I need to, can somebody write that book? <laughs> Y'all turning concubines into queens. I can't tell you how many men are so tired of seeing this shit. Uh, females for sure, women for sure, 100%. But I just, so many men are so tired of this. I wish y'all really, I wish y'all could just hear how they talk. It's not flattering. This is an image of Janelle Monet on the right. Bless her MK Ultra ass out because she has just completely done a whole 360. I told you guys, these satanic elite people, these people that are in control behind this whole agenda, they're getting ready to let you know all of the ones who work for them. And I can assure you, Megan Thee Stallion and Janelle Monet are both on the team. This is Delilah frequency in full effect. <laughs> so succubus energy, you know what I'm saying? There's nothing about this that adds unto anything. There's a whole bunch of women in the audience that are grossed out, I can assure you. And there's a whole bunch of men on the audience that's like, I could have went to the strip club for that. I came here to have a good time with my woman. I did not come to see a whole bunch of women on stage twerking and 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 shaking and thumping and growling. And <laughs> come on, man. That, so Satan is letting you know who works for him. These are two of his parishioners. I'm not impressed by either one of these females, but you know. I'm from a different timeline. So Janelle Monet raises up her breasts, raises up her bra at the Essence, Essence Festival to prove her sexual liberation. I went back and watched her recent video. I hadn't, I had just seen bits and pieces of it, pieces of it online. I watched the whole video today. I could not believe. And for somebody who has been as censored as I have, to see this woman has a full-fledged, it's more than soft porn. It's like if there's a soft porn and there's a hard porn, it's like middle porn on YouTube. So the image of her next to the other image of her is from the video of her on a bed with a bunch of dildos. I mean, again, succubus energy, concubine energy, weak minded, silly woman energy, whatever you want to call it. I don't, you know. And don't write me talking about, you know, how I talk about these females or certain language that I use, y'all better, <laughs> the timeline is, 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 is upon us. These women are cannon fodder. <laughs> what do you say, uh, what do you call it? Um, not cannon fodder, um, collateral damage. You got your silly ass up on stage. Knowing that, that I'm sure there was children in the audience. I mean, it's the Essence Festival. This is not a Luke party. I'd never even had, you know, you, you Essence Festival holds a certain sort of je ne sais quoi, I should say. I've never been. But everybody that I know that has been has always spoken very highly of it. It's a very high mark in terms of our culture, in terms of the New Orleans vibe and sort of going and, and, and having that that black beauty, black excellence, black sisterhood element. But what is this? <laughs> They've turned the queens of the world into hoes. I don't know what to say. And half these women probably don't even like men. So there's that. Everybody got, up, got all up in India, Ari, all up in arms with India, Ari. And God bless her for having the courage to even say this. I think it would have been wonderful if, you know, five years ago when this was starting to really, well, three years ago, three to five years ago when this was really starting to spearhead, gain a lot of momentum, this whole frequency, and all of the Black women were either sitting quietly on the sideline or like joining in on it, um, like Erica Badu twerking on stage with Megan Thee Stallion. Who does that? Like, why is the queen trying to act like the concubine? I don't understand. But again, I'm cut from a different cloth. But India Irie, it would have been wonderful to see more Black female celebrities speaking up and speaking out about this when this was really starting to gain momentum. 
it's wonderful to talk about it in terms of the context, the concert element, and in terms of the experience of the Essence Festival, et cetera. It would have been very powerful to talk about it just in terms of the impact that it's been having on our daughters for a long time now. But with that being said, still want to give her proper acknowledgement. She said the issue is what is context. Humanity does humanity does everything, but does everything belong on a stage? No. Is everything for kids? No. Is everything for everybody? No. So when we as a culture make something like this mainstream, it shows a lack of discretion and discernment. To those in the comments who laugh at anyone who wants things out for our culture, you cert who wants these things for our culture, you certainly have that right. Just as many folks have the right to want our mainstream international export our music to show us in a respectful light. I'd like to go on the record saying this won't age well, and that's my issues. I love Janelle and Megan the way I love us all, and I don't want and I don't like this moment. Don't bother debating me, lol. I don't care, and I do this for 25 years. I've done this. So read and ponder or don't. So what she said was right and exact. I 100% support everything she said. I just want to read some of these comments as a response, including Essence, which has just completely shown itself. I mean, they did this a long time ago. I stopped buying Essence a long time ago. But a brother said, or I assume this is a guy, said, wait, hold up. I thought Essence was about excellence and uplifting. Essence says, or whoever's handling their Twitter, Black has no boundaries or excellence. Do you see the form here? I'm assuming they're talking about the form of the dancers, which is laughable. This is excellence across every human endeavor. Thanks. And I'm not getting, I'm not saying that there's not, you know, I do yoga. So I understand the, 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 the beauty of the sensuality of the body and being able to move and dance and do certain dances and the rhythm, of, but stop playing. I'm not even about to like dignify that with an answer. Whoever the idiot is that's running this page and the idiots that co-sign that stupid shit. No disrespect, but I'm definitely disappointed. I grew up on Essence and I thought there was a standard of black excellence. I still don't understand why nudity, twerking, et cetera, has to be named culture and display publicly. I'm a mother of multiple girls and it's disappointing the amount of sexual behavior that is being pushed publicly. I'm reading these to let the other women in the world that are just completely disgusted let, know that we are not alone. Somebody else says, so tired of this, it keeps ruining our image. Who the hell is handing, who the hell is handling Essence Festival? Because last year was classier than this. And I find it interesting that this year, along with the super ratchetness of the BET Awards, that they both just kind of came back to back. Again, we're on a chronological time now, timeline right now. So the devil is in the background, twiddling his thumbs and moving his puppets into position. There's a lot of things going on in the world that are a thousand times more important than this, but this is a thousand times relevant to what's happening in the world. And why we won't stand up and why we won't speak out for anything and why we won't fight for anything and why we won't sharpen our consciousness and awareness and why we won't stop playing and being a speak people of sport and play and why everything is about entertainment everything is about the turn up everything is about having fun nothing is serious there's no conscientious intention or focus in our culture in black america none whatsoever particularly in terms of what's happening in the world is silly, it's stupid. I'm sorry, it's, stupid is not the word I wanna use because it's, but it's just like, oh my God, frustrating. I see people in the comments equating this to our physical, historical and African dance moves as a justification for why this is okay and shouldn't be criticized, but that's not what is happening here. This was titled Hot Girl Boot Camp, and that equates to stripper culture, worlds apart, and definitely not something I'm supportive of continuing to perpetuate and elevate. I'm so glad she said that because it really bothers me when people... People try to throw the Africa element in there because it's so disrespectful to Africa because you are not you are not mimicking or copying anything else African. Not the dress, not the, you know, the 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 metaphysics or the spiritual elements, not the you get where I'm going with this. The Essence Festival is officially for the new generation. Looks like we need to create our own celebration for the mature and classy ones. 
essence responded and said, so inclusion of every avenue does not mean exclusion of your needs. Hate to see you go, friend. That's that weird ass liberal modern language that that these people use. We're pretending like they're saying something and they're not really saying anything. I'm not impressed. But again, essence is, you know, one of those media propaganda tools that they use to push an agenda. They will have a a, a, a full-fledged million dollar budget you know, obviously Essence isn't black owned anymore, but being propped up to promote the celebrities, to promote black excellence, to promote black culture, they'll give a thousand people jobs and have a, a one year full salary budget campaign, et cetera, and have five main underlying agendas. And all of that wonderful stuff can happen. Yes, black girl magic, yes, black excellence, all of that. Just make sure these five things get done. And I think this this performance, this expose featuring Megan Thee Stallion was probably on that list. She's doing her due diligence. Congratulations pouring for Tyler Perry over historic BET BH1 purpose, but did it actually happen? It turns out that it didn't happen. It hasn't happened. He is in the, the buying stages, but I just brought this up because I saw so many people as a result of all of the backlash from the BET awards. It's too ratchet, blah, 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 all of that. So people were like, oh, I hope Tyler Perry comes in and sees all of the backlash and he steps in and you know turns it into something viable for the culture. But my thing is this, and the deal hasn't gone through. I've looked at a couple of different articles and it's still, he hasn't purchased BET basically. So all of that was, you know, um, a little bit too early in the first place, but BET stands for Black Entertainment television. This is a platform that is focused on entertainment. No platform that is focused on entertainment is going to make a large dent in terms of the mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical elements of Black culture that need to be elevated and fixed. It's entertainment. Nowhere in our history and as vast and as long as significant has it been, has there ever been a time period where people look to entertain entertainers for anything besides entertainment? So when you have Cardi B sitting down with Joe Biden, and when you have Megan Thee Stallion doing interviews with Kamala Harris, that should tell you something. They're putting a certain type of woman, a demigod, an avatar in front of you so that they can get the masses of women who are lost and who are struggling to find their identity and insecure and without love, which is the root of how the devil gets in in first place, lack of love. So they bet on that because that's the system they set up in the first place. Never in the history of the world has any ancient or any significant people used entertainers as for means of political or spiritual or emotional or just societal consciousness. Now, yes, there have been plenty of great musicians and violinists and pianists and you know, great entertainers that have raised the level of consciousness through music or through their art form. How many are there among us today? I'll wait. Now you could say Beyonce as an entertainer, as a, you know, yes, there's a very strong argument to that. I 100% applaud her as one of the greatest to ever do it. And I'm not a Beyonce fan, but I can still say that. 100% and mean that. And I've been to her concerts before. But to say that her music or her stardom has done anything significant to change the, the consciousness and awareness of most of her fans, I don't think so. Now her fans are going to her concerts and getting amnesia. I don't know. Is there, is there a real conversation happening about that? Is anyone concerned? And I'm not even this isn't even actually specifically about Beyonce. Her name's not even in my notes. Um, I think I've 
I don't even know why I honed in on her. Maybe it's Tyler Perry looking at his face <laughs> making me think. But the point is, oh, it's probably because I've been talking about those concerts and the amnesia situation. Never in any period in history have celebrities and entertainers set the mainframe of the collective consciousness in terms of how girls act, how women act. Oh my God, Cardi B cheated on Offset. He put her on blast in his timeline. Well, what did you expect? Hashtag black love, okay. I've shared this, this image. I was gonna read this and I told myself, cause I, every time I show this, I never read it all the way cause it's just kind of lengthy. And I was like, okay, this time I'm really gonna read it all the way cause this is important and it's super relative, but I'm not gonna read it all the way because I've already been talking for an hour and five minutes. But I showed this and I have talked about this because going back to the conversation about indulgence versus discipline, whether you're a man or a woman, your body is set up to operate at its highest capacity when you are disciplined in every part of your being. You have these glands, the pineal gland, the pituitary gland, the thyroid gland, the thymus gland, the pancreas gland, the adrenal glands, and the sexual glands, which basically govern your body and make sure that it's operating at peak capacity or warn you when it's not. This is a whole system of glands that is mutually operational. So when one particular, particular gland is low on energy or is low on fluids, the other glands pick up where that gland is, is, is running low and send energy or send fluid to those er other areas of the body. These seven glands may be visualized as vessels, which are attached to one another by a series of tubes or blood vessels. Each vessel or gland is dependent on all others for its supply of liquid or energy. If the sexual glands are supplied with liquid, this fluid will slowly disperse through the vessels to the remaining six vessel vessels. We're talking about the glands. Similarly, if the pancreas were to be drained excessively of its fluid through a leakage of some kind, each of the other vessels would give up a portion of its supply to reestablish an equilibrium within the system. This is a similar, this is similar to the way energy flows within our bodies. A state of weakness or susceptibility to, to disease arises when one system, or in this case, one gland, is deprived of energy for some reason. Our task becomes then one of not only reestablishing the balanced flow of energy to overcome this weakness, but of also stimulating the flow of energy so that we raise the level of energy within our body to its maximum. Now let's bring this full circle. Because <clears throat> remember, we got one lady on one side talking about sex with 36 men is the same as having sex with one man 36 times. And then we got another one man on the other side talking about men can do whatever they want to do. Men are superior to women because he can have sex with 60 women and get each one pregnant, but a woman can only get pregnant by, by one man. Well, here's the deal. Using this science, that is everybody's science, doesn't only apply to some of us. This is for all of us, men and women. For a man to get 60 women pregnant at one time, what do you think that th that would do to this system? To be actively sexually engaging with 60 different women. Remember, all 60 of these women have these spiritual bodies around them. How many of them are high vibrational, you know, righteous minded, striving to live in accordance with certain standards and morality versus dull and dingy and uh? I'm just here for the get down. Because if she's in that 60 number, if she's number 47, <laughs> baby mama 40, number 47, <laughs> that's her calling card, right? That's how he saves her number in the text message, number 47. She's probably not that bright. You don't care how much money you have. So I'm just saying, do you have a man getting 60 different women pregnant? So he has this whole process with his fluids and his energy system because each one of those women is taken away from his life force energy. And if she's a succubus or if she's a low vibrational woman, then she's taking even more energy. And he might have 30 of those. So stop playing with me. 
stop playing with women stop playing with god you can run that shit on the you know the ditzy females that y'all be having sitting around you on the podcasts in you know skin tight uh dresses with you know looking the part whatever that part is don't really have much to add to the conversation y'all can talk that type of language when there's no queens around so in terms of the female talking about having sex 36 times with one man versus having sex 36 with 36 different men do you think that in terms of this particular system does a woman's body have to work harder or experience a variance of fluids and energy and you know <laughs> what it takes to have with 36 different men sex with 36 different men you think that's affecting the output of the sexual glands <laughs> the, what they call the house of essence because remember this is the physical this this image up here top left and this and again this is the microcosmic orbit but this is also the same um mapping system of the chakras right and these chakras go direct connect directly with these different glands to regulate these different parts of the body right but this is the physical counterpart to the spiritual counterpart going back here Okay, so we know every every facet of this life and this understanding has a physical and a spiritual counterpart to it. The spiritual being the most grand, the most important, the most emphatic, because the spiritual realm is where the physical is where the physical reality is created. So you've got 36 men in their bodily fluids, their ejaculation, their saliva their DNA, et cetera, et cetera. Then you've got their energy, right? How many of these 36 men, these 36 different men, right? Randomly having sex with this one female. So are we talking about high vibrational, spiritual, righteous men, or are we talking about dudes just trying to get one off? Probably the latter. So is his etheric body gonna be strong? Is his higher self gonna be tapped in? working at full throttle his etheric body is it going to be a strong powerful resonance or is it going to look something like this times 36 36 potential demons maybe narcissists maybe emotionally unstable hmm? okay so hopefully you if you find one man that you can have sex 36 times with, you've done your due diligence and you have, have garnered this man or selected this man to be worthy of your body because you've already had a conversation with him and can tell the difference if he is gentleman participant A or participant B. By now, I feel like I've set a, a strong enough, I've established a strong enough case for the last two videos where we have a proper understanding, if it may, even if you don't know exactly, I, I feel like I've, I've given enough context for the spiritual body is element. So no, having 36 sex with one man 36 times is not the same as having sex with 36 different men who have 36 different energetic auras, 36 different shadows, 36 different etheric bodies, 36 different body elemental beings, 36 di different sentient body and soul members, plus karma, plus the sexual energy of whatever other females that he's dealing with, plus whatever trauma is stored in his body, whatever trauma is stored in his mind. Does he even like you? The 36, of course. Do these men like you? Do they respect you? Are they are they are they handling you during the act, of course, because you know, maybe that's all there is. Are they handling you with care and compassion and love? Or is this a hit it and quit it type situation? I mean, there's we need details. Actually, we don't. I think I've made the point. Concubine culture. Y'all done made strippers goddesses or <laughs> 
that I almost slapped myself for saying it. Not really, but I'm just saying, smacked myself. The, a proverbial, gentle, backhanded, non-existent smack for me. Because <laughs> y'all done made concubines into queens. Tried. You're still trying, but it'll never work. So question was, do you fuck with a real woman? Over. Parental, uh, not parental discretion, but the language in this video is a little bit testy, but it's important and it's relative. Um, <clears throat> so I'm to play this video real quick, but I wanted to give that uh, forewarning. Um, but in this video, they're talking about, this guy is talking about being able to di differentiate the difference between the quote unquote real woman versus the other. Question was, do you fuck with a real woman? Let me and, answer that question. And the reason why I asked okay, I'm is because if you fuck with a real woman, she's going to agree with you. Hey, maybe I shouldn't step outside wearing this, that, this nasty ass shit. Let me or, answer that. This the problem. The real woman is standing too close to the hose, so we don't know the difference until we start talking to y'all. No, no, listen, listen. I, 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 met, I met a lot of women. It don't mean, I don't care if they from the hood. I don't care if they from, they got two parents. They interests are the same. It's like right now, right? If you see 10 lions coming down the street, are you gonna try to figure out which lion gonna bite your ass or not? You're gonna be like them 10 lions. So unfortunately, the real woman agree with too much shit that these holes is on, so we don't know the fucking difference. Y'all gotta stand too, y'all gotta stand far away from the holes because y'all dress like them. Y'all wear the same shit they wear. Y'all listen to the same music they listen to. Y'all stand for the same shit they stand for. In most cases, not you, baby. But in most cases, the, the real women got too much in common with the hoes. For, and I'm going to give you an example. We from the hood and all that. But a street, a street nigga that's really out in the plug, that's really out there doing that dumb shit, he ain't got shit in common with me. So we look mad different. The women, y'all look too much, talk too much, and act too much like the bitches who ain't shit. So we don't know the difference. You know what I mean? So, I mean, barring him, I didn't... You know, I, I'm, I'm not even there. Um, I get his point. And I get that a lot of men are basically saying that same exact thing in a, in a different way. What I will say is this. Um, we don't, a real woman don't have anything in common with a hoe. <laughs> so when he said, you know, we don't know the difference until we start talking to you. Well, then maybe you should start talking to women more. And if that's all it takes, is if that's all it takes is for you to have a conversation to get to know the difference, then what are we really saying here? Are we saying that men need to start developing new standards and protocols for how they govern themselves and the women that they interact with? And instead of leading from your lower nature and operating in a sexual capacity with women, maybe you need to start slowing it down a little bit and start having those conversations up front so you can tell the difference. This is why discernment in this hour is critical. Because now we got a conversation that we didn't even talk about in that, the conversation they just had, we showed that, you know, we showed the statistics earlier. That wasn't even a part of that conversation. <clears throat> he said, we don't know the difference because y'all dress the real women dress, look like, stand for the same things, and act just like <clears throat> the hoes. They have too much in common. I can assure you if she's dressing like and looking like and has the same interest at hand and has so much in common with the hoes, then she probably is of that ilk. It's not a judgment. It's just a fact. Water seeks its own level. And you can, you know, be a corporate lawyer or be a doctor or be a maybe a staple in the community, et cetera, et cetera. But, you know, there's a lot of layers to human beings. There's levels and layers. Right. So. And this is, again, not a judgment thing, like what's right or what's wrong. It's just the isness of is it is it appropriate around children? Do you conduct yourself in certain types of ways? And, you know, we have enough sense to not go in a corporate environment and start twerking, at least. Hopefully a large demographic of women have that much sense. We know not to do it in church, although, you know, 
the women definitely be coming through risque, especially if the pastor is fine, but that's another story. We know how to conduct ourselves in certain environment when it's to our personal benefit. Why can't we keep that in mind in terms of how our behavior affects other people around us? How, what is that twerking dynamic doing to the male female di dichotomy to the point where I have to come to you and make a statement and say whole protocols don't work on queens? Because obviously gentlemen are trying to use whole protocols on queens and it doesn't work <laughs> and it never will. And if it works, then you know, you might need to revisit what type of woman you're dealing with. But I appreciate what this brother said because he's right in terms of, I, you know, I wouldn't necessarily say these are the real women versus the, you know, I think a lot of the, the, the moms who are dropping their children off for soccer and at PTA meetings and, you know, all these different dynamics are also like online twerking now. So it's like this weird schism, this paradigm element. Um, or schism in the paradigm, I should say. Like everybody all up in arms now. Why, well, I, I, you know, this bl black blogs. I won't say everybody's in arms, but this whole thing with Kiki Palmer and her her children's father or her child's father and, um, you know, her energy towards Usher in the concert situation, which whatever, that's not even a point I want to make. But the, the point is how invested all of these females are in terms of women having this sexual freedom and the, the ability to do what they want and to carry themselves how they want to. Yeah, but how? But what effect does that have when you have to have a conversation with your child? Not Kiki necessary, because you know, she got caught up in the moment, obviously. No man wants to see his woman goo goo eyed over another man like that. I think that's enough for most women to be like, this is not even a big enough deal to even jump in this fight, because he should be jealous. He should, whatever he said about her dress, whatever, it's totally understandable. But the point is, I brought her up for a reason. I, I think I forgot. I, Black people are way too invested in, in entertainers and celebrities. <laughs> and a lot of you females are absolutely operating on whole protocols. That's why I brought Kiki up. Not to say that she was operating on a whole protocol, but, you know, the the image not the image, the body language and the way she was super boo boo eyed over him. Like, yeah, you you got a man you passionately in love with. You think he's not gonna feel some type of way? And you a celebrity and you got cameras in your face. She was supposed to handle that a little bit more gracefully, in my opinion. But I would have been more focused on my man and making sure that he felt secure and knowing that not even Usher has access at me. But you know. <laughs> That's just what I'm saying. That's just me. That's just my two. So message to the men of the world. Your choices in women is getting the best of you. I've done consultations. I've talked to so many men. They will be listening to this video. They are in my membership channel. I love y'all, but you are definitely going to have to learn how to balance indulgent discipline. You're going to have to learn how to be alone. You're going to have to learn how to control your sexual urges. You're going to have to learn how to really live with and love yourself to start to attract a better quality of female companionship. Because the longer you keep settling, the, the further away your ideal, ideal female is going to be away from you. Your male leaders are misleading you. I'm gonna have a drink of water real quick. Let that settle into the ethers. I ain't gonna say no names, I ain't even that serious, but I did listen to a video earlier that was talking about average men versus exceptional men and everything being centered around your ability to attract or to not attract a woman. And I think that is very dangerous the same way they do it to women. Everything, building yourself up, up as a woman is all supposed to be about, you know, getting married and settling down. And yes, those things are wonderful. The family element is wonderful, but there's so many layers and dichotomies to, to being a human being. We all have goals and desires and interests and, you know, goal, things we want to accomplish while we're here. Maybe we have karmic debt that we're trying to get rid of, things that we need to work through from past lifetimes. I mean, this is such a marvelous and amazing and expansive human experience. And I think it is very dangerous for, you know, this 
there's a lot of uh, degrading men in the name of inspiration. You're too insecure, you know, talking about the, the dating element, the dating world, how the average man can't get a woman, et cetera, et cetera. Like these dudes are playing on you guys' as insecurities. They want you to live vicariously through them because they're handsome and they're charming and they may have a certain, you know, formula that works in, in a certain regard and you see them becoming successful and females are paying attention to them. And so now you want some of that for yourself. So you go and invest in that, but you're still further away from who you were originally because you were never looking for that guy in the first place. You were trying to be more like this guy so you could get more females instead of just doing it because you want to be tapped into your divine nature and who you really are and why you came here and what makes you unique and, unique and special. I'm just saying. So your male leaders are misleading you. And a lot of the culture that men have set up for men is absolutely 1000% not in alignment with your health and well-being, including Magic City being open for 24 hours a day. That is one of the most, I, <laughs> I lived in Atlanta. I was like, it's 10 o'clock in the morning. How are there cars in the parking lot? Who goes to the strip club at 10 o'clock in the morning? And I don't even care. I'm just saying. That's part of, you know, we cheer that. We, you know, the, we, we hoorah that. That's that masculine energy, that manhood energy. But is it really? We don't even talk about them spiritual bodies lap dancing, <laughs> joining in on the lap dance. Hopefully she got some angels right, rocking with her and not some demons. And spiritually transmitted diseases. 36 men versus one man, going back to that. Learn how to cultivate and practice discipline. That's critical for women too. I can't stress that enough. I very rarely hear women talking about, especially feminine culture, all feminists, you never hear women talking about discipline. Maybe if you go to like cross training or you real athletic or something like that, but I mean, we need to be disciplined, the balance of indulgence and discipline in all of our affairs. If you're talking about tantra sex, there needs to be a conversation about indulgence and a conversation about discipline. Be selective about who you give your time and energy and life force to. Be selective about who you give your time, energy, and life force to. I think that men's choices in their mates, especially with this super promiscuous environment, I was listening to Nas last night and he has a song. He says that he knocked down some of the girls that Future and Drake knocked down. And I remember when I first heard that, I was like, why would he say that publicly? You know, like, eh, you kiss and tell that. But then I was like, in thinking of it in context, in terms of what we're talking about now, this spiritual body element, and then, you know, that transference of energy and data, like, eh. Uh, so y'all deep y'all might be deeper connected you drake and future might be deeper connected than you think i don't know it's something to, something to think about <laughs> something for men to think about learn how to transmute sexual energy you can take that trans sexual transmutation is about learning how to discipline yourself and to fine tune that energy into something else that brings you pleasure. It doesn't have to be orgasmic, physical orgasmic pleasure. It can be spiritual pleasure. It can be mental or emotional pleasure. It can be building something. It can be creating something. It can be helping people. It can be starting a business. It can be coaching youth. It can be doing martial arts. It can be doing some yoga, some sort of physical training. It can be hiking, connecting in nature. It can be running. It can be bicycling. I mean, it's a big world, 196,940,000 square miles. I'm sure you can find something else to get into. And remember, the pool of potential mates, it's not the same. So that's God telling you, don't leave it to even me. I'm just the messenger. The numbers don't lie. That's God creating circumstances and situations to force you to learn how to transmute sexual energy. The kings and the gods and the good men and women among us, the way the kings and the queens and the gods and the goddesses and the good women and men among us that are striving to be righteous and to be in this world and not of this world will understand exactly what I'm talking about. 
Stop settling. Men, stop settling. Channel that energy back into yourself. And with that being said, ladies and gentlemen, I'm right on the cusp of one hour and 30 minutes. So I'm going to stop this. I think that's a good amount of time. I think I conveyed the message and I don't think I have any more slides. Let me just make sure. Nope, that's my last one. That's my last message. I wanted to end with some, 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 some love and some reassurance and some powerful feminine, divine feminine energy um, to help my brothers that are single or that are stuck in these low vibrational, low vibration relationships with these women that are not serving them. And they might look good but they're not cultivating your spirit and are not cultivating you mentally and they're not challenging you and they're not helping you to become your highest and truest best self. This is why the conversation about polygamy is so prevalent, prevalent <clears throat> because most men are choosing based on one, sometimes two, the mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical as mental, spiritual, emotional, physical, the four attributes that all of us, you know, there's are equally made up of. Um, men are generally choosing for physical attributes in terms of their partners. And then they may choose in terms of, you know, um, <clears throat> similarities, uh, you know, I, I want to be a businessman. She's going to be the housewife to set up the house, et cetera, et cetera, which is nothing, absolutely nothing wrong with that. I just need a support system, that type thing. So you're not really looking to be spiritually connected with a woman that's going to empower you spiritually and mentally. You just have these basic, you know, basic or grand, wherever it falls on the spectrum, you have these specific needs that you want to be met and you're not really probably not tapped into that part of yourself yet or not thinking that far ahead. And then eventually, once you start to get bored in the relationship, because it's not stimulating or cultivating all of these different aspects of yourself, now you can go online and listen to a thousand podcasts telling you that you're not meant to be with one woman. And then it will reiterate all of the things that don't really mean anything and continue to move you away from the real lesson, which is you are a mental, spiritual, emotional, and physical being. So having a woman that compliments you mentally and spiritually and emotionally and physically would be the highest and best goal, in my opinion. And I'll leave you guys with that. As always, I look forward to your feedback, your energy, and your attention. Much love to my brothers. You guys know I've gotten so much flack over the years because, you know, I'm going to hold you accountable, but I'm also going going to rock with you guys and rock for you. And I'm looking for God's people. I'm looking for the children of the sun. I'm looking for the 5% of the 5%. Not looking like I'm out in the world on a scavenger hunt, but like I, I am vibrationally and in terms of frequency and in terms of where I am in my consciousness and awareness, I am seeking you out. So... I'll see you guys very soon. Peace and love. Info at ZazaAli.com is my email. ZazaAli.com is my website. All of the information will be in the description in terms of one-on-one -on -one consultations, et cetera, et cetera. All right, peace, y'all.